So Fibrous is a new and exciting company set up here in Northern Ireland and we're going to invest £100 million building super fast broadband infrastructure across rural and regional areas in the north. So this year we have plans to deliver our infrastructure to 14 towns right across Northern Ireland. We're really excited about it. That represents roughly 30,000 premises. In terms of where we're going, these are rural and regional towns and the infrastructure itself will be transformational for these areas. Up to now, you've been getting your broadband over the phone network. We're building a network that's designed exclusively to deliver hyperfast broadband. That hasn't happened in these areas before. So that means the quality, the speed, the reliability and the cost of this service will be like nothing else anybody has been able to access before. So I'm from a rural community and I understand how important it is to have that connectivity, not only from a social aspect but also from a business life. And having that connectivity in homes and small rural businesses is critical for their growth. In terms of the benefits that will deliver to a residential home, I think this is, this is up to 17 times faster than anything you've currently got at home. So what does that mean? Uh, if you're a gamer, then you, no more buffering. You're, you're going to be able to download games way, way quicker than you ever could. HD TV. So if you've got multiple people in the house doing all of these things at the same time, they won't see any delays. It'll be a much better experience for them. Today, you're paying the price of a Ferrari for Ford Escort broadband. Tomorrow, with the new Fibre Superfast Broadband Network, you'll get Ferrari broadband for the price of a Ford Escort. Fibrous are a local Northern Ireland company, so the people you'll be dealing with all live and work in, in Northern Ireland. In every century um, in the past, there's been a critical infrastructure that underpinned the economy. Fibre is that infrastructure for the 21st century and we're doing our part to deliver it. Good morning everyone and welcome to today's uh, webinar, Making Your Business Stand Out Online, organised by Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon Borough Council and sponsored by Fibrous Broadband. My name is Neve Taylor and I am Director of Digital 24 and I'm delighted to welcome you to today's webinar. We, up first, we have Carlin Henderson, who is the Director of Digital, and I'm just going to hand over to her now. Thank you, Carlin. Hi, everyone. So just two seconds, I will present my screen for you. Okay, great. So yes, I'm Carolyn Henderson. I'm the Director of Digital for Digital24. Today, I will talk through digital strategy and the platforms that will help your business stand out online. Then I will hand over to Cara, who is our social media specialist, who will talk about creating social media content and also sharing some amazing video content creation tips and advice. So if you do have a question, please note it in the chat box and we will answer it at the end. Okay, so firstly, it can be very overwhelming which channels to choose. And it's important to note that you can't do everything well unless you have a team around you. So it's about being selective and choosing the most important channels for you, your business, and for the products or services that you offer. Okay, so firstly, take a look at what your competition is doing, especially those that maybe aren't a close competitor, but those that you aspire to be like. So chances are they have put in a lot of budget into testing, a lot of time and effort, so they know what works. So take a look at, are they utilizing Google ads? Are they utilizing Facebook ads? Are they uh, uploading fresh, regular content for SEO? and draw inspiration from that. Okay, so the most popular platforms to help you get discovered, but to also help you stand out online would include Google My Business, social media advertising, Google search and shopping, social media marketing, and then also SEO or search engine optimization. So discoverability is linked to standing out. 
how can you cut through the noise? How can you make sure that your competition isn't seen before you? So Google My Business, this is something that can be quite easily neglected, but often it's the first port of call for finding local businesses. So make sure you have a listing. Okay, so we'll just take a poll here. So have you updated your Google My Business within the last month? Okay, thank you for taking that poll. Okay, so Google My Business. So it's important whenever you're creating your listing that you want to choose the right category so that your business can be found in maps and on search. Also, it's good to collect reviews, which can be done quite easily. Um, so there's a functionality within the listing where you can copy a link and then you can send that through in WhatsApp or else on an email campaign. It's an easy, quick way to try and increase your reviews. You can also add in additional information, the likes of offers, blog posts, of course you want to update your opening hours, and then you can also add in products. Okay, so this is analytics within Google My Business. So you can see who directly searched for your business, who found you by searching for a product, or who found you through a search for a brand that you may stock. So Google My Business is very important for SEO, so search engine optimization. So there's the opportunity that people will come across you from generic searches, not just through your own name, as can be seen here. So that's why you want to fill out all the fields and maximize that opportunity. Okay, so there are so many categories that you can choose from. Make sure that you choose the most relevant and you can have up to 10 max. So select a primary category. Um, so for ours, for example, it is an um, internet marketing service. So it's important for users to know what your main product or service is. So make sure you incorporate that. So you can create an offer post. You can highlight any special promotions that you have running. Just make sure that you go in and update it once the offer ends. You can also upload blog posts. So you can add a little snippet and then a link to the full post to read more. So you can kind of treat this like, like a mini website, but you need to make sure that you keep it fresh with new and regular content. So make sure to use the business description field um, and try and work up to the maximum character limit. So again, it's going back to kind of treating this like you're optimizing your own web content. You want to include your target keywords. You want to be descriptive of what you're selling. And this is for Googlebot as well as for customers. So if you don't know what Googlebot is, it's the web crawler software used by Google to crawl content and pick up keywords and then um, also the likes of alt text with images and then links as well. So really you are creating content for Google to crawl. You want them to then increase your search visibility as a result. So highlights. So this is another opportunity where you can go in and describe your business with keyword rich text. So again, it's just going back to making sure you maximize every single um, opportunity there is offered to you within Google My Business. There is also the option of adding in your products. So you can add them in manually. Unfortunately, you can't auto sync them. Um, now you don't need to go in and add every single product. Um, you can maybe just pick three to five of your top best sellers. And don't forget that whenever you type in a local search query, Google My Business will be right at the top, especially on mobile. So you want to highlight your top best sellers. Okay, so getting reviews, these are really important for SEO, but also for general trust in your brand. 
So as I said before, here is where you can go in and copy that link and then you can share that within WhatsApp or within an email. Try and boost the volume of reviews that you have. You can also go in and add photos and videos. So cover videos and then general photos. So you want to make sure that you're adding fresh photos and images of your product and service, say your store interior and exterior. So anything that helps with making sure that your business is recognizable and entices the customer to find out more or to go visit. Okay, so then this is just a checklist of what we've covered on Google My Business. Okay, SEO, search engine optimization. So whilst it can take a long time to improve your organic search visibility, you don't pay for it. It's not advertising. Okay. So in addition, people will view it as more trustworthy than the likes of an ad. So it's a high volume, high traffic source. The blog content, this is a big component of gaining better search rankings. So you want to post regularly, at least say once or twice a month. You want to make sure that your content is aligned to the keywords that you want to rank for. So for example, at Digital24, we provide digital marketing tips, but we also have some honest think pieces that people appreciate. So you can have pieces there for engagement, but first and foremost, it is for Google. That's what you want. You want Google to recognize what you're doing um, and then reward you with increased search visibility. Okay, so another poll. So have you researched keywords that are relevant to your business? Carmen, sorry, I think you might be mute. Hello, apologies. Okay, so some technical issues there. Okay, so jumping back into the presentation. Okay, so what you wanna do, going back to search engine optimization. So you want to create a content calendar. Be proactive and think about the type of content that you want to produce and when to post. So Answer the Public is a great free tool to help gauge what questions people are asking. So you want to use that to help formulate the titles of your blog posts. Okay, so this is an example of what you would see whenever you use Answer the Public. So just for example, if I typed in jewellery, then you can see all these questions that people would typically ask, and then you can use that to formulate your content calendar. Because on Google search, what you want to do is answer or provide a solution to people's queries. And then another example would be Google Keywords Planner. So it's also free and it will pull in information related to the keywords that you type in. Okay, so it will pull up average monthly searches and then there will be additional information here, but this would be related to Google advertising. So you can see um, the competition, but then also the bids or estimated bids. Okay. So it's important to incorporate your core target keywords across your site to make it obvious what you do to both users, but most importantly to Google. So you wanna make sure that you're standing out by making it glaringly obvious what you do. 
So add your keywords to your top navigation, uh, your titles, your subtitles throughout the body content. So this information will then be pulled through to Google search, for example, the likes of site links as well. So you want to make sure you're maximizing these opportunities. And then this is a quick checklist in regards to SEO. Okay, so Facebook and Instagram ads. Okay, so we have a poll here. Have you run a Facebook or Instagram ad before that isn't a boosted post? Okay. Okay, so Facebook and Instagram ads. So first and foremost, you want to choose your ad objective. So whenever you go into a Facebook ads manager, you'll see this whenever you go to create a campaign. So this is based on a typical marketing funnel. So at the top, you would have awareness. So getting your ad in front of as many people as possible. Then you would have consideration, which is driving people to the site. You want people to engage with your content because they are in the research phase. They want to learn more. And then you also have conversion. So they're ready to convert or to make a purchase. So we would recommend a combination of both top and bottom funnel for most clients. But if it's bottom line, if it's sales that you want, then of course you're going to go for conversions. So it's important to get this right before you do anything else because Facebook optimizes according to those objectives. So make sure you choose the right one. Okay, so you want to start off with um, placing a pixel on the site. It needs to be in place, especially if you want to track conversions and if you want to remarket to people who have been to your site. So that is a wee piece of code. That's the only way Facebook will know what people do once they land on your site. So it's important to make sure that you have that implemented. Okay, so tips to success with Facebook and Instagram ads. So just to reiterate, so you wanna make sure you're selecting the right objective. You can also take a look at what competitors are doing within Ad Library. So whenever you're on Facebook, and you navigate to a page, you'll see um, along the side, page transparency. If you click on that and then click on ad library, then you'll see the likes of this appear. So you can see a competitor's ads across different regions and across different platforms. So you want to test, say five to six variants of image, carousel and video type content. And then by doing that, uh, once you get the data coming through, you can start to refine it and start to identify which is your top performing ad format. Separate out your audiences by ad group for easy reporting. Um, as I said, we start out broad and then we start to refine. So you want to create various different types of ad copy to see what works. So that's the um, captions and the messaging. You want to let it run for at least two weeks before making decisions. And this is important to note that any time you make an edit, Facebook will pull that ad back into learning phase. Okay, so make sure that, um, and that can then have a knock on impact on your performance. So make sure that you, if you are going into edit, that um, there is a good reason why you're doing that. Okay, so prospecting and remarketing. So that's both top of the funnel and bottom of the funnel strategy. So we like to have a combination of the both. And in regards to budget, we would say 70% on prospecting, 30% on remarketing. But of course, then you can adjust this as you get the data coming through. Okay, so then catalog remarketing. So remarketing through catalog sales, we do quite a lot of this because it's very effective and it works. 
So it's an easy way to keep your brand top of mind and stand out amongst the rings of ads that are on Facebook. So you want to present the user with the products that they have seen before. Okay, so products that say they have viewed and added to cart. So whenever you go in to create a campaign, you'll select catalog sales and then you'll stipulate the audience. So we tend to go for uh, those that have viewed the product and added to cart stay over the last 14 days, but you can adjust that time period. It's also referred to as dynamic remarketing. So it will change the products according to that user and their activity on your site. So basically you're creating hyper relevant ads that are customized to that user. You're presenting them with products that they have viewed or maybe added to cart before. Okay, and then this is a very important one. So the importance of branding. Okay, by investing in your brand, you will reap the rewards with your advertising. So we have noticed that we get a higher return on ad spend. So return on ad spend would be the metric that we uh, measure. So for say every pound that you invest in your advertising, you would get three pounds back in terms of revenue or conversion value. Okay, so that would be an average one to three. So we see a higher return on ad spend with client accounts that are putting in the effort and posting regularly on social media. They're working with influencers, they're working with a PR agency, they're getting their brand out there. So the greater the brand recognition, the cheaper it's gonna to be to acquire new customers and then also being able to bring customers back to the site to convert and make a purchase. Okay, so for some of our clients, we're getting return on ad spend of over um, one to 25. And that is because the brand is strong and they're investing in it. And then this is a checklist, just covering what we have discussed there for Facebook and Instagram ads. Okay, so then Google ads. So Google shopping, uh, it's gonna be highly effective for the Black Friday and Christmas sales. So it takes up quite a lot of search real estate right at the top here. So if you wanna make sure that your brand stands out, you should really take advantage of this opportunity to have a prominent position on Google search. So it's quite easy to set this up if you have a Shopify site. So you can go in and create a new Google Merchant Center account, which is what you will need for Google Shopping through Shopify. And then you can also create your Google Ad account and it will sync automatically with the product feed that you have within your website, okay? So once those conversions are coming through, you can then switch from having like a manual Google Shopping um, ad account to smart shopping. So with manual, you're, you're able to uh, have control over the bids that you apply, but then smart shopping, you're basically handing that over to Google. Um, and we see great results from doing that because it's all automated, but at the beginning, it's good to just start with manual. So then Google search, this is a really effective conversion channel. So this is for high commercial intent search queries. The top three ad spots take about 40% of the clicks on the page. So there is a greater intent here. They are actively searching for a product or service that they are in the market for. So what you wanna do first and foremost is start with Google Keyword Planner, do your research, so you want to then, once you've done that and you've taken a look um, at what uh, is feasible and the competition around those keywords, you want to tightly target your ad groups and your campaigns so that they are hyper relevant to the person's query. So you might just have like a handful of keywords within each ad group, but that then means that it's directly relevant. Okay, so you will be scored by Google, it's called quality score, based on the relevancy between the keyword, the ad, and also the landing page. Okay, so you want to make sure that your website is up to scratch. So if you're going to be driving traffic to the site, you need to make sure that's prime for conversion. But not just that, you also want to make sure that the keywords um, that are included on the landing page, that you're targeting them within the Google ads, and they're also present within the ad copy. So then also what you can do is um, have a strategy from broad to exact match keyword targeting. Basically that just means um, broader, more generic queries will be triggered. And then for exact, it's exactly that keyword or key phrase.
Okay, and now I will be handing over to Cara, our social media specialist, to talk about social media content and video content. Harlan, just before you hand that over, um, there's a few questions that have come in that uh, I would like you to answer. Um, mm -hmm. So the first question is, if I had £500, should I spend it on Facebook ads or Google ads? Okay, so if you had £500, okay, so it's going to be very much dependent on the business and the product or service that you offer. So I would say, firstly, do your research. Use the likes of Google Keyword Planner to assess the search demand and then how expensive it will be. So Google Ads are a high intent conversion channel. Facebook Ads are great for both awareness and for conversion, but they are more visual. So take a look, you know, are your competitors using both? Are they tending to focus more on Google ads and Facebook ads and where are they advertising and take inspiration from that? But really it's going to be very much dependent on your business and the likes of the search demand and um, you know, just how visual your product or service is and whether Facebook ads would lend itself to it. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that answers your question. Another question that has come in, should I do boosted posts or not? Okay, um, so boosted posts um, and the likes of creating uh, paid ad campaigns, like we tend to do both. However, we would focus more on creating ad campaigns to run in the long term. So boosting posts that can be done, say, on an ad hoc basis. Um, but when you're creating a campaign, you have control over the setup and choosing the objectives. Boosting is kind of more so for like a quick and easy way to promote a Facebook or Instagram post. So with an ad campaign, you have more control, you have more granularity, you get more insights from that. So I would recommend ad campaigns in the long run so you can get more data and insights from it and boosting posts can be on an ad hoc basis. Okay, okay. thank you. And the final question for you, Carlin, before I hand over to Cara, is what was the tool to do the keyword research in Google Ads? Okay, so it's a Google Keyword Planner. That's the tool. Brilliant, that's great. Um, Carlin, thank you so much. And um, now we will hand over to Cara to deliver her uh, social media uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you. So, hey everyone. Um, so yeah, as Neva introduced me, uh, my name is Cara and I'm social media and content specialist at Digital24. So today I'm just gonna chat about organic social media and all things video content. Okay, so just go straight into it here. So Facebook currently dominates the social media landscape. So for organic social media, it's so important for businesses with Facebook being the primary distribution channel for marketers. Um, however, we feel like nowadays, like there is more of an emphasis as well on Instagram. There's actually a stat out there to show that Instagram is becoming increasingly popular with 70% of consumers using it to discover new products. So never underestimate the power of social media and we will talk about this in further detail now. So to start off with, we're just going to give you a little case study on Ted and Stitch. So Ted and Stitch is one of our clients who um, recently actually just started there um, back in February. So if you take a wee look here at the two screenshots, um, there is a little example Facebook post and then just a little example of how their Instagram feed looks. Um, what we always recommend with social media, it's you know thinking about what I what organic social media channels benefit yourself. So usually it would be the likes of Facebook and Instagram, but also for other businesses, the likes of LinkedIn and Twitter can work also. But one real general rule we would follow when it comes to organic social media is having that call to action. So what exactly do you want your consumers to do when reading a social media post? Is it to visit your website, read a blog post, look up a product or a service? or buy a product from yourself. And you can see here just a wee screenshot below of uh, Ted and Stitch's Google Analytics and how many people actually come from uh, social media with 3,000 new users. Um, so it just goes to show that the power of social media is definitely there and businesses should be using it. Another reason why social media is popular is because it's highly visible on search. If you take a wee look at these screenshots, we have the example of Digital24 and Ted and Stitch. 
So we have, um, obviously the website is number one on Google um, with SEO and stuff and uh, an emphasis on websites. But if you just take a wee look below the websites, you can see here that Facebook and LinkedIn um, are actually appearing on the first page on Google for Digital24. And with Ted and Stitch, you see their Facebook and Instagrams actually appearing in the top uh, four searches there. So social media is definitely a platform to be using. So how exactly can you get your social media seen by people and how exactly can you get on the first page on Google with your Facebook or Instagram profile? And at the end of the day, it's all down to keyword research. So just with Karen was chatting about earlier about keywords are so, so important. You know, you should be optimizing um, this on your social media platforms as well. So thinking about your about off section on Facebook, you know, what exactly what keywords do you want to get in there? So for, the, for example, of Digital24, you know, you want to get that we're a digital marketing agency. We specialize in pay-per-click, social media, SEO, and that we're based in Belfast, Northern Ireland. All those keywords ultimately are what people are going to be typing in on Google and on Facebook and Instagram if people are looking for those services. So that's what you just need to keep in mind. Another tip when it comes to organic social media is looking at content pillars. So you can see here, and um, here's a list of content pillars that we like to keep to when it comes to social media. So the first we one here is educational. So educational content pillar is really just thinking about, you know, you want to be the expert in your industry. This really works for the likes of people that are in the medical industry or especially in gyms and fitness where people can do educational video content, infographics and just posts in general about teaching their consumers something. So I always find that these posts actually work really, really well. <clears throat> Next is inspirational. So what exactly can you offer, you know, your customers or your followers? You get a lot of people that will jump on to the likes of Instagram and Facebook stories and just share relatable content that people can look up to. And just it helps develop that little connection when it comes to consumer. So inspirational content works really well too. We take a look at interactive content now. So I would always use the example of Instagram stories. And this works really well if you think about the poll sticker, the question sticker, the reaction slider, all those kind of things where it encourages people to you know, share and to tag their friends and comment on their posts is all interactive content. And that helps boost your engagement on social media platforms. So interactive content is definitely great to consider. Next is you have connecting. So connecting content is where you want to connect with your audience. And usually this is done through hashtags. So if you think about the likes of Instagram or more recently actually on Facebook as well, hashtags are becoming increasingly important because it helps get your content seen by your, um, by your followers. So you think about, you know, let's say you're in the fitness industry, you want to have you know, hashtag fitness, hashtag, you know, gym, hashtag, you know, and then working on certain muscles within the body. You know, you want to get all those relevant hashtags um, throughout your social media posts. So it is seen by the relevant people. You can also connect with your followers by collaborating with local businesses and influencers. We always find this works really particularly well with um, us at Digital24. Um, an example would actually be Ted and Sitch, who I mentioned earlier. She does a lot of influencer collaborations where she sends new products out to influencers across Northern Ireland to help spread the word and spread the message about her new products. And that helps her product get seen by more people. And that's getting her um, her account essentially out to other people who don't actually follow her. Next is promotional. So we all need a little bit of promotional content throughout our social media feeds. At the end of the day, we're all selling a product or we're selling a product or a service. So we definitely want to get some promotional content on your social media feed, whether it's through a product video, a product demo, it could be just nice product photography as well. But then even including some offers you may have, especially with Black Friday coming up, promotional content will be throughout our social media feeds for the next couple of weeks uh, with people promoting some offers and discounts there. So it's definitely great to, although you know you don't want to bombard your followers with too much promotional content, it still is important to have on social media. Next is newsworthy. So newsworthy content is really great too. And um, whether you have um, content that's actually relevant to your business, where you may have a new product launch, or you've did something where it's been picked up from the likes of Belfast Live or Belfast Telegraph, 
um, you want to share that newsworthy content because it helps get your brand seen by other people ultimately. Um, also, I would always keep in mind, um, I actually do some work for an estate agent. And, you know, if we've got any relevant articles that are out on the likes of Belfast Live, all to do with, you know, first time buyers, if you're looking at the housing market in Northern Ireland, that kind of newsworthy content works really well for them because it's keeping their followers updated with the current house market and just keeping them um, informed too. And then finally, we're going to look at entertaining content. So entertainment's a great wee platform to be, or a great wee type of um, content to be posting on social media. You'll find a lot of memes, a lot of viral videos, and just funny content in general. And um, all the lighthearted content actually tends to do better on social media. So you will find that entertaining content gets the better engagement on social media platforms, but that's because it is lighthearted. People are scrolling and you know they're going to pick up on the funny content that's relatable to them. So it always is important to have a good mixture of these content pillars throughout your social media feed. Um, but just that's good to keep in mind. So next we slide here is video content. So we're going to just jump right into it. So after we look at the content pillars and looking at the types of content that are available for organic social media, we're going to look at how video content can actually help spruce up your social media and drive more engagement. So taking a look at the types of video content out there, you have short video, YouTube videos, Instagram and Facebook stories, TikTok, IGTV, Instagram reels and promotional videos. So we're going to just dive right in here and talk about this in further detail. So we're going to go do a poll now and we're going to actually just uh, find out, do you currently use video for your business on social media? Okay, okay. Um, so that's quite interesting. So quite a lot of you actually are starting to use video. There still is um, a good spread there. 50 to 60 uh, percent of you are using video content, which is great to hear. So we'll chat about how you can use this um, video content, um, you know, to use for social media. So now we're going to look at what kind of content works. So I generally keep to this rule where I would keep to these five top tips. So first of all, you want to focus on stories, not sales. And a good example that I use for this is Apple. So Apple, we are all familiar with Apple's marketing and how they're very simplistic. Um, however, they did get um, a video they launched last year about promoting the Apple Watch. And this is a great story to tell about on how the Apple Watch can save people's lives. They interviewed three or four of their customers and helped them share their story. And it helped tell a nice story, but ultimately it was selling the Apple Watch, but it didn't come across as too salesy. So you definitely want to focus on a story when you are um, filming video content. Next is to use the first few seconds wisely. So if you think about, I've got a wee screenshot here of four easy slow cooker dinners. Um, so, you know, that's where you want to use the first few seconds wisely. You want to tell people what the video is about and what they're going to learn. You know, if it's an educational video or is it just a video to maybe demo um, one of your new products, you definitely want to just get there, whether it's in a text caption or whether it's a piece to camera, you want to tell the consumer what they'll be learning when they do watch the video which links in with a third point, which is creating a hook. So you will get a lot of videos that, you know, exactly with BuzzFeed here, where they'll actually show like a clip of the dinner actually made in the first few seconds, which helps create that hook. And then people that are like, oh, that looks so tasty. I'm going to watch the rest of this video to see how it's made. Next is to upload an, an, an interesting thumbnail. So you can take a look at the wee screenshot here. I've got some YouTube thumbnail examples and see how these bright colors with the little text captions really help um, engage you. And you know it helps draw your eye to that thumbnail and makes you actually want to click on that video. So that's a general rule of thumb. It doesn't just work for YouTube. It's actually important on the likes of Instagram and Facebook as well. So definitely it's important to upload thumbnails. And then finally, just like all social media posts, it's important to include it to call the action. So what's the purpose of people watching this video? Is it to try out a recipe that's on your website? Is it to visit your website to learn more about a product? Or are you wanting them to check out your social media to look at the, risk list, the list of products or services that you've got available? So definitely think about what call to action that you want to do. And then from there, you can build out your video content. 
So coming on to some content ideas now. So I know video content can be quite daunting. You know, you're kind of like, oh, what what actual content can I get out there and what can I promote um, for my business? So here are just some uh, tips for you. Um, first of all is telling a story. So this is just the little screenshot here. You can see here of the two guys. And um, this is actually a screenshot from the Apple um, Watch campaign that I was chatting about a little bit earlier. Um, it's a really great video and I really encourage you to check it out. But definitely help and tell a story is a great way um, idea for content. Next is a customer testimonial. So, you know, this could be really short, like in 60 seconds, well, 60 to 90 seconds long, you know, of a customer talking about, you know, their experience with you as a brand. But also, you know, they might have brought a product or a service from you. And if they're, you know, if they want to rant and rave about it and maybe create a, like a little customer testimonial video, that's great content to share on the likes of your Instagram stories, but also your Facebook and Instagram platform. Next is how to videos. So you can see here of the sangria um, float there. Um, this is an example of BuzzFeed Tuesday. Yet again, they just blow video content out of the water. They're really short and snappy video content, all 60 seconds long, but they help you teach, they help teach you ultimately how to create a recipe. Um, so it's definitely, if you are looking at more how-to videos and educational videos, check them out because they do this really, really well. Next is hosting a Q&A. So you will find a lot of people jump on Instagram stories nowadays and will bring up the question box and that helps you know your customers and your followers get to know you a little bit more you always find that brands you know they want to connect with their audience a little bit more so q a's work really well with this you will go to like likes of influencers that jump on instagram stories and do q a's every other week but also a fun way to maybe answer some of the questions that your customers have to ask you can maybe actually um answer this in the form of a youtube video because it will be slightly longer video content Next is you can recap a blog post. So you may have a really good blog post that you want to get people to go onto your website and read more information. So you can maybe jump onto your story content or create a little um, short video just recapping the blog post and then your call to action ultimately would be to uh, check out your website to read more. Next is answering frequently asked questions. So you could jump on and just answer some frequently asked questions maybe in a form of an IGTV or a YouTube video. And then next, well, the last two would kind of maybe uh, line in together, but introducing your employees and showing a day-to-day -day life. We actually have a couple of clients that do this really well. Um, we always find that, you know, jumping on the likes of your Instagram stories and showing like a day in the life is really good. I know ourselves at Digital24, we're actually jumping onto our stories now more and showcasing um, a lot more of our employee day-to-day -day life and what we're getting up to each day. And we always find that that content works the best because it's really helping people connect with the brand and it helps just people, you know, just um, connect with us a little bit more and uh, get to know us. So on to types of video content that actually works. So um, I would always recommend that short video content is the best throughout right, all social media platforms. So you take a look at, um, I don't know, during lockdown, if you're all familiar with TikTok, but TikTok is really the birth of why video content is just doing so well at the minute. And um, those short 15 to sec uh, 60 second videos are throughout all social media platforms. And really they're all coming from the likes of TikTok. All that viral funny video content is ultimately coming from TikTok and then it's shared across all social media platforms. And the reason why these videos are doing so well is because it's snackable content. It's short and it's sweet and it makes them um, our short memory spans at the end of the day. If you think about the amount of content that we have on the social media nowadays, when we are scrolling, it's hard to actually watch you know, a five minute video on our Facebook or our Instagram. So that short content ultimately works really well. Next is our 50, uh, 15 second Instagram and Facebook stories. Really short and sweet yet again, but you will feel, you will find that a lot of Instagram stories when people are talking to camera, and um, usually this can go on for, you know, the likes of two to three minutes, but even so that is still really short video content. And that links in with the last bit there is on Facebook, you don't really see any video content that is longer than three minutes. And if so, it doesn't get a lot of watch. Um, it doesn't get 100% of people that do watch the video watching the whole way through. So that is important to consider when creating your video content. So short video really does help match our short attention spans, but also it is snackable content that will work and get engagement on social media. 
Next is IGTV. So you will find with Instagram when you do upload Instagram videos, um, you are limited to 60 seconds. So Instagram actually launched a feature back last year called IGTV. And this allows you to upload videos that are longer than 60 seconds, but shorter than 15 minutes long. And this just helps you really, you know, bulk out your video content. You can see here in these screenshots, these are taken from the Digital24 Instagram. Um, and they're basically just really nice um, educational pieces of video content that you really can't get in 60 seconds. So you can see here, digital marketing tips for post-COVID. You know, there is a lot of tips there to get, get in in 60 seconds. And that is why um, IGTV um, is a great wee platform to be using for that kind of thing. So that actually links in with a new feature that's launched in Instagram called Instagram Reels. So I'm going to go to your poll here and I'm going to ask you, have you created an Instagram Reel yet? Okay, so not an awful lot of you, 6% of you have actually created um, an Instagram Reel before. So it's quite interesting to see that not a lot of people are actually starting to use it yet. Um, so Instagram Reels is basically a new feature. It was launched um, a couple of weeks ago on Instagram and it basically is just taken what TikTok essentially is and moved it over to Instagram. So I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with the likes of TikTok or used it throughout lockdown, but basically Instagram Reels are short 15 to 30 second videos, um, which can display on Discover page of Instagram. So it'll be interesting to see how Instagram Reels actually perform down the line because you're getting that dominant space on the Discover page on Instagram. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how many people actually do engage with the video and if it gets, you know, uh, more likes and comments than other posts that you do get out on Instagram. So to create an Instagram Reel now, it's kind of similar to the likes of TikTok, like I said, where you do upload clips from your camera roll or you can fill them in app. So with the likes of Instagram, I don't know if you're all familiar with Snapchat, but you've got access to a wide range of filters on Instagram Reels. So you can create all really cool effects to create really nice video content and really nice transitions too. And then from there, once you have uploaded your video content and you're happy with all the clips throughout your video, you can then use the Instagram uh, music library. So from there, you can actually choose music that's from the UK top 40. You can pick any song coming into Christmas now. You can put a little bit of Michael Bublé on your Instagram videos, which is quite cool, without copyright, which is great. So um, it definitely is something to maybe take a wee look at and experiment with. Um, if you are a small business that does have the time to create Instagram Reel, definitely check it out. Um, but I don't know if you're all familiar during lockdown with the UK top 40. Basically, 99% of it was all TikTok viral videos. So um, it'll be interesting to see how Reels will uh, will impact that too. So uh, yeah, next we slide now. So some of my top tips when it comes to video content. So first of all, editing software. So I always say for people starting out with video content, definitely check out free apps. And the free apps that I would recommend is InShot and Splice. They're fantastic free apps and um, you can use them on both Android and iPhone. If you are wanting to dip into a little bit more video content and you're wanting to experiment and play about with it a little bit more, you can use some desktop apps um, such as iMovie and Adobe Premiere Pro. But definitely stick to the social media. If you are sticking to the social media kind of video content, definitely check out that InShot and Splice app because it's fantastic. Next is the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds, when you are really creating a professional video for the likes of social media, your website or YouTube, and um, I don't know if you're familiar when you do launch the camera on your phone and you've got these little faint nine squares. Well, basically, um, the rule of thirds is where you can get the object or the person that you're filming within one third of the frame. And that helps really create a really nice um, guideline for when creating your video. So definitely check out that top tip there. Next is captions and subtitles. So 85% of videos on Facebook are watched without the sound off or without the sound. So that's actually a really interesting stat. It's quite high too. And that just goes to show that captions and subtitles are really needed throughout video content. And like coming to think about it, you know, when I'm scrolling on Instagram or Facebook at nighttime, I actually don't have the sound on too. So definitely consider using captions and subtitles throughout your video content. Next is create um, engaging content that is short and sweet. And uh, we always find that short videos work better. There's plenty of stats out there that you can uh, research and learn more about, but definitely try and keep your video content as short and sweet as possible. 
And then finally, another top tip would be to measure success. So although there's plenty of video content out there, such as IGTV, Instagram Reels, and then your short form video, YouTube, definitely check out, you know, if you're experimenting with video content, check out your analytics on both Instagram and Facebook and see what video content's actually working. You might find the Instagram stories get more people watching, or you might feel that IGTV actually works well. And if you are experimenting, um, experimenting with Instagram Reels, happy days. Take a look at the stats and see if people are actually engaging with that content. And then from there, you can start building upon that in your content calendar. So last week's slide now is just an equipment checklist. So if you are wanting to get started with video content, here are some of my recommendations if you're wanting to invest in any of these. So taking a look at audio. So if you feel like you're doing a lot of more pieces to camera, uh, maybe you're outdoors a lot and you feel like the wind's picking up on uh, when you are talking, um, you may want to invest in the likes of a lapel mic. So these are the little mics that go up your jumper or your jacket and they clip on. And basically it just helps pick up that audio that little bit better. And that works really, really well for the likes if you're doing uh, pieces to camera, maybe uh, professional pieces like IGTVs. Next is wireless mics. So maybe if you're doing more like interview style pieces, you may want to invest in one of these as you won't get any wires in the shots. So it looks really more professional. You've got desk mics. So you may be a fashion blogger, for example, or you may be a little boutique based in Northern Ireland um, and you may be doing a try on video. And a desk mic might, might, may, uh, may be something you want to invest in if you are wanting to do more voiceover um, on your video content. And then finally, you've got access to smartphone mics. So they may be good worth or worthwhile investing in. Um, you can find these on Amazon and they'll be really great for likes of if you do a lot of Instagram and Facebook stories. Next is tripods. So you've got access to a standalone tripod where these are the little ones that have a little adjustable elements. So you can use it for outdoors and indoor use. But make sure if you are using your phone to film to invest in a smartphone tripod and not a camera tripod. Next is a portable tripod and these, this is the little tripod that's actually beside the text here. It's called a gorilla pod and a gorilla pod um, is really flexible. You can bend it in certain directions and it's really lightweight and easy and it's great to just pack in your bag if you are taking filming con um, if you're filming content on the go. And then finally, you've got access to your ring light tripod. And this is really great if you're maybe in the beauty industry and you maybe want that great lighting along with just having a stand there to support your phone. These are also great if you're jumping onto Instagram and Facebook stories. And then finally, looking at lighting. So I would always recommend you use natural light if possible. And um, at the end of the day, it's free. But if you feel like, you know, if you're a small business owner and maybe the time just isn't right and, you know, you want to get some vid um, video content done at nighttime, maybe look at investing in an LED light, a ring light or a softbox. Just a little note there that uh, softboxes are slightly more on the expensive side. So probably my recommendation there would be a ring light if possible. So that is the end of my slide. So if you've got any questions here. Thank you so much, um, Cara. So uh, there's a few questions have come in. Uh, one question is, what about TikTok? Should I have it for my business? I own a boutique for ladies 30 plus. Okay, perfect. So um, TikTok's definitely a great wee platform to be experimenting with video content. If you feel like you're a small business and you have the time to experiment, TikTok's definitely a great platform to get on, especially if you believe that you're more on the quirky side of things and you want to play with play about with nice transitions or even viral video trends. And what TikTok's great for, if you don't have the following on TikTok, you can even use TikTok to create your videos and then share on the likes of Instagram and Facebook where you do have the larger following. So definitely don't rule in, uh, TikTok out if you don't have a platform and don't have much of a presence. It's definitely a great platform to really just experiment with. And especially in ladies boutique and ladies clothing, there's definitely loads of trends and loads of videos there on TikTok for inspiration. So it, even if you don't even create videos on TikTok, it's really good just to inspire you when it comes to creating video content as well. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Cara. Um, another question. How can I schedule content on Instagram so I can have a break at Christmas? Don't we all want a break? 
oh tell me about it yeah no definitely when it comes up to christmas you don't want to be spending time you know during the christmas period scheduling content for social media so um i would use a tool called creator studio and creator studio is excellent for scheduling content on instagram and facebook and as well as that you can actually schedule um, your video content and you can schedule igtvs using creator studio which is really really great um, I don't know more recently if you're familiar or you use Canva to um, create graphics or any of your content for social media, but they've actually launched a content scheduler as well. So that might be worthwhile checking out as well. But it is important to note the Creator Studio is completely free. So you don't actually need to worry about the cost or anything when it comes to scheduling posts. I know some small businesses do invest in scheduling tools, but definitely try out Creator Studio. It's actually owned by Facebook itself. And you can, there's really easy to access. Just simply type in Facebook Creator Studio on Google. And I would also add, um, Cara, that because you're not using a third party API coming into the Facebook and Instagram platform, um, Facebook will typically reward you by using their own native platform for scheduling content. So, yes, definitely check out. Yeah, definitely Perfect. Um, two more questions for you. Real or IGTV, what should I choose? Okay, this is quite an interesting question. I would probably lean towards Reels um, because it is the shorter video content. It gets more exposure on the discovery side of Facebook or on Instagram. And I feel like you can be a little bit more creative with Instagram Reels because you've basically got the editing element um, within the Instagram app without using any third party software to edit your video content. With IGTVs, sometimes the longer style video content might not get the best engagement. Plus, it may take a lot of your time to edit the video and create a really nice long video like that. So I would probably try experimenting with Reels and just seeing how it works for you. That is brilliant. Um, and just let me pick one more question. There's loads coming in, but one more question. What was the video app called Slice? Okay, so there is two video editing apps. I didn't really get to talk about that in much detail, but basically um, the app that I have the most preference towards is InShot. Um, InShot is completely free on the App Store for both Apple and Android users, and it basically allows you to add text to your videos, transitions, music, and it allows you to change the canvas side of your video. So basically um, what that enables you to do is let's say you've got one video content, one piece of video that you've filmed in your camera roll and you might want to use it for Facebook, YouTube, Instagram stories and your Instagram feed. You can change your canvas size with InShot which is great and then you can then ex export that and put that across all your social media platforms. Splice is the exact same really and um, it's got a couple more uh, different features than InShot but definitely worthwhile checking out. The only wee note that I would put about the two apps is um, for £3.99 a month you can have extra features and remove the watermark. But the app is completely free to download, but it might be worthwhile if you are experimenting with video content more, maybe worthwhile investing in that £3.99 a month. Brilliant, that's great. The question was called Slice, but it's actually called Splice, S-P. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Cara. And now I will hand you over to Orla from uh, the Linwoods marketing team. Over to you, Orla. Thank you. Thanks, Neve, for having me and thanks for inviting me along today. <clears throat> so today, really, I'm going to tell you a wee bit about Linwoods and our marketing, and then we'll really take a deep dive into the digital marketing activities that we um, partake in and give you some examples. So we'll kick off with a wee bit about the Linwoods history. So Linwoods originally started over 50 years ago and it was created by the Woods family and it really just started out as a small um, local shop serving the local area. It developed then into a bakery and a dairy. But unfortunately in the 90s, in 1996, John, who is the managing director, he took a health setback and this caused him to take a greater interest into his health and well-being but particularly into his diet and that's when he, he discovered flaxseed and the benefits of it to his diet so he started to spread the word with his <clears throat> his family and friends and he realized then okay let's get into the health food business so they 
began to import milled flaxseed from Canada in 2004 and the business really started to grow and there was a great interest so they, the company then start, um, they built a plant to process their own flaxseed just outside Armagh on the Hamilton's Bond Road and as the business developed unfortunately we, we stopped um, our activities in the dairy and bakery industry but we're now fully fledged um, and totally invested in the health food industry and our range is growing and we have some great NPD coming along in the recent in, in upcoming months and years. So just to have a wee look at our current operations as I say we have our site on the Hamilton's Bond Road which is just down on the bottom right for you there and we also have our headquarters, which is mainly our offices and our NPD uh, plant, and that's on the Monaghan Road. So we employ over 100 staff, and that includes ver various departments, including sales, finance, food science, food quality, marketing, logistics, and many more. And here we have our, our core seed range in front of you, and you, you may notice it's got recently a wee bit of a makeover. We'll talk about that soon. but what I wanted to say really here is the purpose of our company is to work with nature to help our customers live a healthy and balanced life and the mission and our mission is to enhance the health and well-being of many people through nutritious plant-based foods. So in front of you you can see some of our customers so we deal with many retailers throughout the UK, Ireland and actually even abroad in many of the European countries such as Spain, France and Italy. We also operate through um, retailers and also online. So just to take a wee look at our marketing strategy, you will note as I just slightly touched on earlier, we have recently gone through a rebrand. But uh, what, I, what that really meant for our marketing was that we carried out a huge amount of research and it allowed us to really better understand our customers. And we found out that they wanted a clearer message and vibrancy. So we have created our packaging to look like that, but it meant too that we were able to align our communications um, to what who our target, marketer, what target market was. And you'll see that as I begin to talk about what the type of um, content we produce in our social media and digital channels. So moving on, our strategies and our, uh, our strategy for growth, we break it down into three pillars. We have one, recruiting new customers, two, driving usage and penetration, and three, innovation and distribution. So ultimately, these are our, our objectives. We have our tone of voice and we understand our, customer, our customers, and then we have our objectives and the messages that we want to get across and what we want to achieve. And that brings us on to our overarching uh, marketing strategy which is an omni-channel strategy. We are always on. We are not only using digital channels, but we're also using traditional marketing means through retailer activations, PR, magazines, press, and so on and so forth. But today we're gonna to focus on some of the, our examples in the digital marketing world. So you can see here is some of our touch points. So we operate from social media, web content, influencers, email marketing, and I'll take a deep dive into all these as we go through our presentation. So first up, we have our web content strategy. So this is quite important to Linwoods because it is the biggest driver of traffic to our website. So in order for us to get people who want to read about Linwoods and want to read about health and well-being, we created customer personas. And that allowed us to understand the general interests and the likes and the personalities behind those who we feel is our target market, given the research we had done for our rebrand. And then we were able to match content, customer centric content, which would appeal to those people. And therefore, whenever they're searching online, our content should, in an ideal world, appear to them. So then we use keyword tools such as Moz to highly index our content so that it's it's able to be found and crawled easily by Google. And as I say, here are some examples of our user content, user centric content, sorry. And it is largely health and well-being focused. So you can see some examples there of our vitamin D articles and also how to look after your immune system, which is so important at the moment. 
And then following that, you can see some of our examples of some of our content, which is our recipes page, uh, uh, another type of content we do, and our articles. So we're cont continuously working to keep our content fresh so that we can maintain high rankings on our search engine results pages. Okay. And now we move into social media strategy. And personally, I feel this is something which Lynn was really excels at. Um, we have really ramped ourselves up and I think we're doing quite well in our content. You know, we have good high engaging figures. So we'll have a wee look at the different types of content that we look at and that we post. So we have personal content. And what we mean by that is we're translating the family element of our brand for our consumers. So we post a bit about the family and a bit about the, the history and the evolution of the business and nearly, nearly as such a wee bit of a behind the, scene, behind the scenes content. We also partake in monthly giveaways, hamper giveaways, uh, competitions and various things. And you can see a lovely example of that um, just in front of you there. And then we also use user generated content, which is something very strong for us. We are very lucky in the industry that we're in that people um, will take photographs and tag us in their products or in their usage of our product. So we will get their permission. And most of the time, people are very happy for us to share the lovely meals and the delicious breakfasts, soups and cereals that they have produced, including Linwood's, which is great. And it, it, goes on to inspire other people who are interested in using Linwood's products for, and give them a wee bit of inspiration for how they can use it also. We then also, <clears throat> we do quite a wee bit of influencer collaborations, but in recent months, we traditionally would have attended quite a few shows, but obviously at the moment, unfortunately, we can't attend shows. So we're trying to look into virtual events. So influencers and collaborations of that effect has really assisted um, in bringing these events online. And you can see an example there, which we just completed over the month of October, which was the Linwoods Health Movement. Within that initiative, we had a closed Facebook group. We had a uh, active, uh, I suppose, like a timetable of activities over the month of October, and it was all for boosting our consumers' health and well-being, keeping fit people fit and healthy, and providing them with knowledge and advice over the month of October to keep fit for the month for the winter ahead. So we used influencers such as Jenna Hope, who's a nutritionist in the UK, and we also used Daniel Davies, who is a performance nutritionist based in Dublin. And then we also used our very own Bubba's Project, Jim, who's based in Armagh, and he um, done like live workouts um, for people to partake in in the comfort of their own home. We also use social media for our news and our NPD. So what you can see in front of you is our latest brand campaign. We will post quite a wee bit about our marketing campaigns, our messages that we want to um, release to the consumer, to our consumers. And we will use our brand hashtags, such as hashtag real goodness. And we'll also post out news um, of what's going on in the business and various pieces of content. And here we have video content, which is something that Digital24 have helped us with in recent months. We're really trying to ramp up our video um, posting online because we feel it's highly engaging. And as Cara just spoke about, you know, it, it's seen very fear, favorably and people really enjoy watching videos online. So that's something that we're doing at the moment. And thanks to Digital24 for, Digital for helping us with our skills in-house to create that. Um, and just moving on to the last piece of social media we have, we have website integration or driving traffic to our website. So we'll, we want to increase awareness of online promotions on our site, promote our newsletter and direct followers to web content and our recipes on our website. We also have our influencer gifting. So every week we post out probably in around 10 hampers, um, including a range of Linwood's products. We send those to various influencers, um, generally around the UK and Ireland. And whenever they receive those, they will then post about receiving the um, products and the hamper. But it, they'll tag up Linwood's in it, but it allows us then to be placed in front of all those followers who follow that particular influence, influencer. So it really amplifies, it has a real amplification um, 
effect on the Linwoods brand. So it's something that we, we do very regularly and we feel it is a great benefit to us. And then for a bit of, um, I suppose we're trying to get across a, a genuine and a trustworthy message. So we post some reviews that our co consumers have left on our products from purchasing online. And we feel that works quite well as well. And that is our social media cover. So now we're going into our digital advertising strategy. So the first one is VOD, which is video on demand. So over the last about six months, we have run two video on demand and ad demand advertising campaigns, which are 20 second adverts. And um, for our campaign, we we put those on ITV Hub and all four. So the beauty of VOD for us is that we were able to target specific specific locations in our case the UK and Ireland and we were also able to display our adverts to a particular set of demographics who are aligned with our target audience and also we were able then to put our advert in between the in the breaks um, of programs that we felt our target audience would be watching so for example Jamie Oliver's cooking and foodie programs and health and fitness and well-being programs in in the breaks of those you would have seen the Linwoods ad so moving on, we have our social media advertising. So we feel digital advertising is very efficient and effective for us. We use largely Facebook and Instagram, and we use a mix of targeted adverts and sponsored posts and sponsored posts for a variety of objectives, mainly maximizing brand awareness and driving traffic to our website with the ability to target users based on the location and or their behaviors it has been particularly effective in reaching our audience of health and well-being interested users and you can see some examples of our facebook and our instagram adverts from our recent campaign which ma matches nicely in with our vod <clears throat> Then we have our Google network advertising. So again, we run a variety of adverts through the Google network. We do our search campaigns. So that's to drive traffic to our site. We use our brand name and we use a variety of other, of other keywords in order to display our adverts to those who are searching. And um, we also use display campaigns, which is to drive uh, awareness of the Linwoods brand and you can see one of our adverts there on the bottom right on the Daily Mail online. We then use shopping, Google Shopping, which is really to convert consumers online via our website. And then finally, we use YouTube. So that again is for increasing brand and product awareness and education and understanding of the product. So then we have our email marketing strategy. So this is something, again, we have been investing a bit further in, in terms of our time and our training in house. And really, we we lost quite a few people on our, on our list, on our mailing list, after GDPR come into place. So at the moment, we are trying to increase um, the size of our list. So what we're doing on our site is we are we have various pop ups and points people can sign up and we're encouraging people to sign up to our newsletter through our social media channels and also sign up while they're purchasing online. So we also went through some training again with Digital 24 and that was to efficiently design and design and send engaging mails regularly. So our training resulted in us allowing our creation time in house going from what was two days of time to just three hours now and we are finding great results in click throughs um, and engagements with our emails. <clears throat> and what we wanted to do our objective here is to create an engaged community so we're sending monthly newsletters sharing recipes and nutritional advice, advice provide exclusive discount codes for online co conversions. And then we have additional emails which are sent out for major announcements or initiatives such as our virtual events or our NPD products. Um, and we, so far we think it's really working well and our list is growing very well. So we're really pleased with the performance. And here you can see an example of the newsletter. So this was one of our newsletters as part of the Linwoods Health Food or Health Movement. Um, 
we had a segmented list of the, those within our email database who were taking part in the um, in the movement. So we were able to send them specific messages as part of that campaign. And again, that has worked really nicely. And that is the end of my presentation today. Thank you so much for listening. And um, if you have any questions, I'm very glad to take them. Brilliant. Thank you so much um, for that, Orla. Yes, there's a few questions have indeed come in. Um, one is, how do you identify influencers to work with? So we have our, as I've talked about, our target audience. And in, in that's one sense. So we try to align influencers with who our brand is and who our consumers are. So we're looking for people who are health and well-being focused, who reflect the Linwoods brand. But a benefit of our, our brand at the moment, because it's it's so well established and it's quite it's very popular, we get a lot of influencers who would tag a lot of you know just online users who would tag Linwoods um just through their daily diet and what they're eating and things like this. So what we do is whenever we find influencers who kind of tick our boxes in terms of they are reflective of our brand and we, we you know, we, we're happy with them, we will open a conversation and we say, you know, would you like, would you like us to gift you some products? And in most cases, they say yes. And we, we ship that, we'll ship our lovely hamper, as you've seen earlier. And um, the example I think I had shown earlier was to Gabby Logan. Um, and then, as I say, they will take photographs of it and share it online with their uh, users and tag us in it. So it's it's a lovely piece of coverage. And just actually last week, we noticed um, Stacey Solomon, who's quite a popular influencer at the moment. She had been using Linwood's um, and that was like off her own back, you know, um, it wasn't a product that we had sent her for free or anything, but we, we'll be following up with her on that because that would be great exposure for our, our brand. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah, you would certainly have a celebrity following, I guess you'd say. Um, another question order that has come in is you do an awful lot. How big is your marketing department? So we have a marketing department of five permanent members of staff. We have, but all in, in separate um, departments as such are um, specialties. We have a brand manager, customer marketing manager, and a, just a newly appointed e-commerce manager. And then we have two executive members of staff, a marketing executive and a digital marketing executive. Now, given what I've covered today, uh, our digital marketing executive is an incredible, incredible member of our team, and she's looks after a lot of our digital activities. But we do do an awful lot, and we do use agencies to achieve the different objectives that we have. And um, we're working very hard here, but also our agencies are working very hard for us. And um, we do have marketing campaigns in various European countries, so obviously there's language barriers there. So the the agencies in particular in the European countries are very advantageous to our marketing objectives. Excellent. Um, and just one final question, because I'm conscious of time. Um, is your website e-commerce or do you sell through retailers? So we we do sell online, but our main objective has been really through our retailers. However, with the current climate and everything, we have seen a, a large increase in our um our online business and even in our retailers they see a huge increase in their online business so we'd be putting a wee bit more emphasis on our online um, activities but at the same time our largest business is within our retailers so we have kind of you know we're shared out I suppose the best way to describe it. Excellent that's brilliant um, thank you so much um, Orla for your time today um that is us thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar on making your business stand out online i hope you have a very successful selling period now in the lead up to christmas i want to thank uh, our math city banbridge and craig gavin for council once again and i want to thank the uh, sponsors fibrous Fibre broadband um so thank you so much everyone and have a nice day
So Fibrous is a new and exciting company set up here in Northern Ireland and we're going to invest £100 million building super fast broadband infrastructure across rural and regional areas in the north. So this year we have plans to deliver our infrastructure to 14 towns right across Northern Ireland. We're really excited about it. That represents roughly 30,000 premises. In terms of where we're going, these are rural and regional towns and the infrastructure itself will be transformational for these areas. Up to now, you've been getting your broadband over the phone network. We're building a network that's designed exclusively to deliver hyper-fast broadband. That hasn't happened in these areas before. So that means the quality, the speed, the reliability, and the cost of this service will be like nothing else anybody has been able to access before. So I'm from a rural community and I understand how important it is to have that connectivity, not only from a social aspect, but also from a business life. And having that connectivity in homes and small rural businesses is critical for their growth. In terms of the benefits that it delivered to a residential home, I think this is, this is up to 17 times faster than anything you've currently got at home. So what does that mean? Uh, if you're a gamer, then you no more buffering. You're, you're gonna be able to download games way, way quicker than you ever could. HDTV, so if you've got multiple people in the house doing all of these things at the same time, they won't see any delays. It'll be a much better experience for them. Today, you're paying the price of a Ferrari for Ford Escort broadband. Tomorrow, with the new Fibre Superfast Broadband Network, you'll get Ferrari broadband for the price of a Ford Escort. Fibrous are a local Northern Ireland company, so the people you'll be dealing with all live and work in, in Northern Ireland. In every century um, in the past, there's been a critical infrastructure that underpinned the economy. Fibre is that infrastructure for the 21st century and we're doing our part to deliver it.